hope you'll see a few more mud crabs today. Oh, yeah. Just one of those years we had so much rain. Basically what we've done with our crab gear, which has been an amazing experience just to watch over the time, is that um, we've reduced you know, your, your catch of juvenile crabs basically you know, 80, 90%. One of the projects I've really enjoyed over the last few years has been working with the commercial fishermen, improving crab trap designs, doing some really good quality research to work out what the best options are. Uh, we're approached by local land services and DPI uh, in regards to studies on blue crabs, uh, which was just basically working out uh, different ways of uh, reducing um, juvenile catches. So a few years ago there was a change in the kind of traps that people were using. So they moved from like a wire mesh to a round trap with a polyethylene mesh. And those round traps were pretty effective at catching crabs, but they also retained a lot of undersized crabs. We looked at some projects that had happened in the Northern Territory and our colleagues at DPI Fisheries have been working on using escape panels. Some of the fishermen down here had tried their own versions of those and so we worked very closely with them to work out the shapes and sizes and configurations that were most effective in retaining the legal catch but letting the undersized crabs out and that's been a really effective and successful project over the last few years and a lot of the commercial fishermen here are um, using those escape panels in their traps now. We finally ended up with a, a panel made out of moulded plastic uh, which fits the current size of blue crabs up to six and a half centimetres so it's been a good journey to watch and I think it's an important thing that interaction with juveniles is you know, brought to a minimum and I think the industry is really taking it on board. Uh, those that have used the gaps have been pretty impressed with them. I know we have and um, we won't put a trap in the water now unless it's got you know, a couple of escape hatches in it. The fishing industry had some really good ideas around changing the trap design so I've really got to give them a lot of credit for being proactive and then working together with us to get some good science and some good evidence to underpin these changes in crab trap designs. Fishermen do really care about their environment that they work in, they care about the habitats that underpin their industries and a lot of them are really proactive about being sustainable and taking care of their environment and this is a really good example of that. Yeah the fishermen got on board really well with the, uh, the crab trap and the escape panel uh, program. It was interesting to see that a simple addition to their crab traps allowed the small crabs to be removed and it just made it easier when they were pulling their traps in and yeah they've got a great size product that comes out of it. They've continued using it since that program started, but they've all got on board and even the recreation fishermen come into the shop and they'll get their escape panels to put in their traps because they've seen how easy it is to pull the trap with the right size crab in it. So our key partners in the crab trap research have really been DPI Fisheries. Also the University of Newcastle have come on board and we've done a range of projects together that have built our knowledge in the area and really helped us refine what the best options are for um, the escape gaps and what we can recommend to the industry and to recreational fishers. So it's been a real good partnership and collaboration. So I've been conducting interviews with recreational crab fishermen who have been using our traps with escape gaps and I've just been surveying them, asking, asking them about how they feel about using these kind of traps and whether they'd use them in the future. And so far all the feedback's been really positive about targeting actual legal sized catches and minimising the smaller illegal sized crabs that they catch in their traps. I've worked with about 20 recreational fishers now and they're in the process of using these to fish at the moment. But the general feedback is that everyone's liking them and like that they don't have to get the fortescues out by hand and avoiding being stung and things like that and eels and yeah, just any un unwanted bycatch. It makes it very efficient and you're not damaging any of your juvenile stock, you know, like they all want to bite you and grab things and that. So, you know, if you're not in the trap, they have a feed and go away, they're getting fat and we'll see you another day. One of the measures of success, I guess, for a project is whether other people look at what you're doing and want to replicate that. And, We've seen Queensland look at our research and think that that's a good idea and they've introduced some changes up there based on that. And just seeing the industry in Wallace Lake and recreational fishers that we've worked with get on board. So hopefully 
right across the board now and we'll see changes in that trap design and we'll be able to yeah, minimise that undersized catch and any potential you know, damage or mortality to uh, unwanted catch.